So I just went to see Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I can thankfully say that for the majority of this film, it absolutely slaps. Robotnik is back with the help of his new ally Knuckles to not only get revenge on Sonic who sent him to the Mushroom Planet, but to also hunt down the Master Emerald, an ancient stone that can give anyone who uses it immense power. So Sonic, along with his new friend Tails, attempt to find the Master Emerald first in order to stop Robotnik from ever harnessing it. First up, this film is definitely better than the previous one, and feels like it's taken steps in the right direction. Not that the first film is terrible by any means, but this is definitely embracing more of the video game lore, and thus we are getting much more focus on the Sonic characters rather than the human ones. Of course, this isn't perfect, and there are elements in this film which I think could have been removed, but we'll get to those in a bit. First, I want to talk about the good stuff. Oh, and uh, by the way, the majority of this review will be spoiler free. There's going to be a segment at the end where I briefly talk about spoilers, but I'll make sure to give ample warning, and we'll have it sectioned out in the video chapters. So, the good stuff. Knuckles. Knuckles is an awesome addition to this film, not only looking great, but the character feels like he's been brought back to his earlier glory days. See, in the original Sega games, Knuckles was pretty much the better character that you wanted to play. He was fast, just like Sonic, but also had the ability to glide and climb walls, and smash anything that got in his path. Sonic sees some rocks and is just like, Oh no, where was me? Whereas Knuckles is just like, <laughs> Now in more modern Sonic games, Knuckles pretty much got downgraded to the dumb comedy relief. So I'm really happy that this film brought him back on top form. In this, he is a powerful warrior of the Echidna tribe, and does not fuck around. Proven to be an equal, if not stronger match to Sonic. And this of course is all portrayed brilliantly by Aegis Elba, who is voicing the character. Do I look like I need your power? We also have the addition of Tails, who is voiced by Colin O'Shaughnessy, who's actually been voicing the character since 2014, pretty much becoming the iconic voice of him. So it was really awesome that they still cast her to voice him in the film, and she once again does a fantastic job. I'm sorry, who are you? Name's Tails. Okay. Tails and Sonic really have great chemistry with one another and I feel the film is at its strongest whenever Sonic and Tails are on screen together. Their dynamic is actually pretty similar to the one Sonic and Tom had in the first film, only now it's Tails who is more the outcast loner, and Sonic playing the more caring older brother. Which in my opinion works so much better in this than it did in the first film. Tails isn't totally useless however, as like in the video games, he's really smart and invents a lot of cool little gadgets which come in handy throughout. Jim Carrey comes back to play the role of Dr. Robotnik and gives the character the same crazy energy from the first film, and it's great to see him and Agent Stone back together again. Once again, there's a whole bunch of little easter eggs to the Sonic franchise throughout. One of my favourites is Agent Stone's coffee shop being named the Meme Bean, a reference to Robotnik's Meme Bean machine on the Sega. And I kid you not, there's also a reference to the Ugandan Knuckles meme. Yep, we've gone from the Sanic reference in the first film, to a Ugandan Knuckles reference in this one. What a time to be alive. But it's not to say that this film is all great. As predicted, the film is at its weakest when we're pulling away from the Sonic characters and instead focusing on the human ones. Fortunately, there isn't as much of them this time round, but that does make them feel as a non-integral part of the story. And so when we're having to focus on them, it feels like the pacing for the main plot is heavily halted. Again, no spoilers here, but halfway through the film we get this subplot wedding sequence which involves Tom's sister-in-law getting married to her new fiancé, and there's this little twist which causes some shenanigans to unfold, and I'm not gonna lie, the whole thing was just painfully unfunny to watch, and definitely overstayed its welcome. This whole wedding sequence doesn't change anything in the plot, and feels like it was only included just to give the human cast some screen time. So, if halfway through the film you feel as though you need the loo, this scene is your opportunity. There's also another scene where Sonic and Tails visit a bar in Siberia, and the whole thing ends up in an awkward dance-off between them and the locals. Again, it doesn't really add anything to the plot, and just feels like it was there for filler. Which for a film with a runtime of 2 hours, you could have quite easily have taken these scenes out. Thankfully though, these moments are quite small, and when we're focused on the main plot of the film, 
things are much better. So if you enjoyed the first film, you're going to enjoy the second, and I recommend you go see it. Not just for the film itself, but also to show these movie studios that catering to the fans can be successful. You think back to the first film where they had no faith in the franchise, to the point that they created this ungodly Sonic design as they thought this was the only way that Sonic could be enjoyed by a mainstream audience? To here we are now where they are fully embracing the fandom in order to market the sequel. I think that's really awesome, and this film really begins to open up other gateways in order to explore more game derived plots. Which to discuss properly, I'm gonna have to get into some spoilers, so if you don't want to hear any, you can click off this video now. There's your warning. So first up is that we get the introduction to Super Sonic, which yeah, I know was spoiled in the leaks prior, but it's still really cool to see. The design looks really nice, and it was a spectacle to see on the big screen. Though from a plot sense, it does kinda just spring out of nowhere, and almost feels like a last minute add-on. But the big jaw dropper was a reveal of Shadow in the end credits. This honestly shocked me, as I was expecting the character to be Metal Sonic. But I'm so much more hyped for this. Not particularly for Shadow himself, but more so with the backstory. Because the one in the games gets pretty damn dark, and I'm wondering if they'll have the balls to carry that through. I really hope they do, as the plot with Gerald and Maria is probably my favourite story arc from the Sonic games. There's already been confirmation for Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and a Netflix spin-off series, which if the franchise keeps moving in this direction, I am all 100% for. Though let's be real. I think there's only one thing that the Sonic fans really want, and I speak on behalf of everyone here, and that is… a Big the Cat movie. You know you'd love it. Come out, come out wherever you are. So I was thinking that we could call it Big's Big Movie, and that the plot could be Big looking for his pet Froggy, who will be voiced by Nicolas Cage of course, and then we could have the antagonist being this like French chef who wants to have Froggy served up in his restaurant, and no no no, hear me out, there's going to be a moment where the chef and his team are about to catch Froggy, and he's like, on three, we'll catch him, and so goes, un, deux, trois, quatre, and that's when Big, the cat, bursts through the wall and saves the day. Huh? Huh? Uh, anyone? Anyone? <laughs>